Hey guys, I hope you're having an amazing Tuesday and you're excited for this tactics video that has been in the works for quite a while now. I've been taking quite a long time to put this out. I'm sorry, but I wanted to make it perfect and hopefully you will enjoy this. But this is going to be once again another aerospace themed tactic, but this time the emphasis will be on the space, not the aero part. Like with any space project, it requires a multinational crew, millions of pounds and a lot of patience to pull off. So if you're excited for a tactic that works for both mediocre and elite teams, smash that like button so YouTube knows my name and let's jump into the video. So let me introduce you to Mr. Spaceman's Spaceship Tactic or how the game calls it, a 325 tactic. So it kind of looks like a spaceship if you squint at it hard enough, just like there and rotate it and kind of, yeah, so let's go with it. Okay. Anyways, this tactic was developed during my Tigers of Asia save with Jeju United as I needed a tactic that would utilize my strength up front and erase the need for fullbacks, which were bad. That was why we decided with this. So if you have bad fullbacks, this tactic is for you. So in this video, we will cover two versions of it. One, which is used for a moderate team, which will be Jeju, and the other, which is going to be used for an elite team, Dortmund. If you can call Dortmund elite, but Haaland's there and Sancho's there, so elite. And yeah, spoiler alert, it worked well for both. So to prove to you that this was actually a good tactic, let me just show you the each specific versions for each team and I'll show you how well they did with them. We started the season by using a 4-2-4 tactic from last year, but the first two games I noticed that my fullback options were not great and there were no youthful replacements to them in the transfer market. So Korean fullbacks are non-existent. Just go with it. So whilst I had some free time on the train, I decided to create a tactic that utilizes basically my best parts. So my strikers, my two great strikers that I've had in Jeju, my two great wingers that I've had in Jeju, and obviously the fullbacks that I didn't have. Boom. This is how the tactic looked like for the Jeju United squad. As I mentioned previously, it kind of looks like a spaceship. Tr trust, trust me, trust me, it, it, it does, it does. And the main point of this tactic is to utilize central play, which seemingly is quite important for the manager this year. So let me go through how this tactic is set up. Starting from the back, we have a sweeper keeper that will obviously come out to collect balls over the top to help against counterattacks. If you have Manuel Neuer or someone that level, put him on attack, that will do even better. A combination of three center backs will ensure solidity in the middle with the best passer being in the middle to play out from the back. In the midfield, we will have two ball winning midfielders whose only roles are to destroy the opposition in case our front five lose the ball, which should not happen. Our opposition should be completely demoralized and destroyed by the five forwards up front, which we're just gonna jump in right now. Finally, the piece de resistance, I hope my accent is correct, is our combination of front players, two inside wingers on support to provide occasional width, but you know, they're inside wingers, so they will cut in a bit. A shadow striker sneaking in whenever we are on the attack. And finally, up front, a combination of two strikers in which one is the creator and the other is the finisher. You decide which one does which. And spoiler alert, the deep line forward gets a lot of assists. You will find out in a bit. Now, now in possession, we force the ball into the middle by playing very narrow. Due to the number of players in the middle, we will play a slightly tiki-taka-esque pressing game with short passes on lower tempo. Finally, I've given the attackers a license to roam by telling them to just focus on creating attacks and be more expressive. They have all the freedom in the world. Most of them do not even have to defend. So that's why we have the ball winning midfielders. You can do whatever you want. Just let the guys focus on attacking. In transition, we will take shorter kicks and distribute to center backs. As if you can see, there's no one else near enough to pass to anyways. So yeah, center backs. <laughs> This is to ensure that we're always in control of the ball and not just hoofing the ball forward. And anyways, if we do lose the ball, this is why we have two ball winning midfielders. They will destroy everyone. So once we do get possession, we will counter straight away as we will most likely have a lot of forwards up front to tear the opposition apart. Out of possession, we will press high both with attacking and defensive lines to make sure we win the ball ASAP. Obviously, we're going to concede width on defense because we have three central center backs and they can do whatever they want in the wings. But if they're going to have to come in, there's three center backs. So that's why we play force everyone to go out. And finally, we'll press more urgently and prevent short distribution. So to prove to you that this tactic actually works and I'm not making this up, let me show you some facts and hope you guys will agree with me. We can see that we won this league by a lot. A lot of goals, a lot of wins, and Jungsun Bin scored 37 goals even though he left two thirds of the way into the season. 37 goals in 25 matches. That's a goal every 55 minutes. So, and also, remember how I said your deep line forward will get a lot of assists? Thiago Liancao, 17 assists. Mmm, amazing. We dominated possession with a staggering 17,000 passes. 17,000 passes. 105 goals scored in total and a 2.76 goals a game. Just look at this team report. We were much better in everything. Attack and efficiency is aggressive and clinical and our defense is quiet and impenetrable, meaning not many players get to our goal thanks to our ball-winning midfielders. There we go. 
So let's now jump into the elite team version of this tactic. And then I can show you if you're doing your bigger teams, how to kind of change this tactic into that. This time I'm going to start selling the tactic straight away. And to do that, I only need to say two things. With this tactic, the pie wins Ballon d'Or. And the other player of the year tactic, which isn't as important, at least in my opinion, but still. Ballon d'Or! What do you want from this? This is amazing! Let's jump into the tactic. There are some differences with the previous tactic, as you will notice. So first of all, the ball playing defender sits a bit lower, and that way he's given more time on the ball, you know, to counteract teams pressing at a slightly higher level, because, you know, when you're when you're a better team, when you play against better teams, they know how to press better, so you give them more time, they can play it out. We have utilized a center forward instead of a deep line forward, which would allow to use Holland as an all-round player that creates and finishes, bringing out the best out of himself, and they advance forward, in this case, the pie. Apart from that, we focus on playing at the back as we have better players and playing at a higher tempo to stop teams from closing up their defense. In transition, we actually, this time, will regroup so that we have more players to defend because, again, the opposition will be better and you can't always depend on your team holding the ball indefinitely. And we compress the midfield even further by dropping the line of engagement. So it's literally just going to be a compressed mid, which should probably destroy a bunch of teams unless they hit balls over the top. So with this tactic, we won the Bundesliga by only one point. To be fair, Bayern is unstoppable, so that's already a good thing. And we won the German Cup. I think not a bad result. If you think so, give a like. In terms of the team detailed, we scored 100 goals in the league with, are you ready for this? 2.94 goals a game. That's just in the league. We don't count the cup games, we don't count the Champions League games where we're playing against weaker teams. No, 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 no. This is just 100 goals, 2.9 goals a game in just the league, in just the Bundesliga, in 38 games. I am a genius. <laughs> and to further give you the point of who scored what, the Pie and Haaland have scored 39 and 47 goals respectively. Which, in my opinion, is completely insane. So this tactic, I think, works. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do try these tactics out. The links will be in the description, you know, both for both versions. I hope you have fun with this tactic because this is a tactic which is kind of following the Brazilian mantra they had a few years back. You know, you can score how many you can, we'll score how many we want sort of thing, which is pretty much exactly what happened. Not many guys could score against us, but we scored how many we wanted. And it's 100 goals in the Bundesliga. Do leave us a comment to say how well it did for you because I am curious to see how well it did for other teams. And don't be afraid to tweak with it. That's the thing. These kind of tactics, at least in my opinion, they're not copy paste. You know, if you have a player that's not good enough to be a complete forward, change it to a deep line forward, change it to another tactic, tweak it, you know, use your brain. If you want your Depay to also win the Ballon d'Or, smash the subscribe button and hit that notification bell for more Football Manager content. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been the Spaceship Tactic with Jeju and Borussia Dortmund, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.